as well as one timing chain for each set. And there's another one back there, but the car is up too high. As well as the camshaft sprocket for the timing chain goes there, which I actually have removed. And that is one part you want to replace when the timing chain gets worn out because that actually um, begins to wear out. And also the um, valve seals on this motor are gone, are gone bad too. So when you have uh, smoke when you first start it up is also a warning sign that those are bad. So down here I actually have the timing chain which is still in good shape but I'm going to replace it anyways. There's the water pump gasket which is actually still good. This is actually the second water pump for this motor because this motor is actually 200,000 kilometers. It could have been replaced at 100,000 kilometers because sometimes they go prematurely which is actually quite common. So now down here if I can just set my light down. Here's your primary timing chain guide and you can see there's a bit of a wear ridge. You know, you want to replace these otherwise your timing chain will be too loose. Now the mistake that most people make is if the water pump goes bad you take your car to the mechanic a lot of mechanics, I'd say 90% of all mechanics that work on these cars know that these water pumps are known to going bad. And that's why you'll see so many Chrysler Sebrings and Intrepids on the, on the used car lots because so many people think the motors are screwed. So people trade them in and the mechanics go ahead and fix them and sell them for a profit. But when you take your Sebring into the mechanic and say, what's wrong with my car? They'll basically say, okay, well, uh, your motor's screwed, so you got to replace it. That wasn't the case for this car. That's exactly what they said. But the motor's not bad. It just has to be, you know, have regular maintenance done on it and have the water pump and all that timing chain uh, stuff replaced. So, basically, this motor's, you know, it's still in good shape. It runs good and uh, just gotta replace these parts and the mistake they make even if your mechanic is nice enough to admit that your water pump is bad way up there it's hard to see it looks like a little line in between that little rectangle there kind of on the bottom part is your primary hydraulic tensioner for the timing chain Let's see if I can get it up there even better um, I can't really get the light in there, but it's basically a hydraulic piston, and that's driven by hydraulic pressure. So when your water pump goes bad, it leaks coolant into the oil and clogs up your, your filter because the engine begins to form sludge, and oil begins to be starved um, from the oil pump, so it lowers the, the oil pressure and you get your oil light. And if you continue driving it, it'll eventually lower and lower and lower the pressure as the sludge builds up. Eventually either damaging your oil pump and starting the engine completely and seizing your motor. Or it'll just gradually slow down and like it'll gradually lower down and, and your hydraulic um, primary timing chain uh, tensioner is slowly letting go of slack. And the timing chain will actually rub up against the water pump like here's where the where the sprocket should be and the timing chain runs down here and goes around and there's a, the, this little cover like this part of the water pump it's just like a little loop here the timing chain runs past it and it scrapes it and if you drive your car long enough it'll wear right through and then you'll have so much coolant just pouring into your engine and then you'll spin all your bearings and that's when you get your motor knocking you know and that's why you see so many of them like burning burning and having smoke out the back and uh, because it's it's just totally you know running like shit like it's damages your bearings so if you do damage your bearings 
you take off your oil pan and to take off your oil pan you have to unbolt these studs unbolt the oil pan bolts take it apart and you get this and then you just take off this um, crankshaft cover here I'm not really sure that the real name of that is but basically you pull that off and then you wiggle all your bearing caps and you see which one's loose and you replace the bearings that are in there that are bad and that'll fix your knock but don't think that if you replace those you're gonna have a fixed engine because you still have to do your water pump because those things always go bad this is actually the water pump um, from the Sebring that I just pulled off and uh, like I was mentioning um, the timing chain this is where it scrapes now it didn't scrape on this one because we caught it soon enough that the timing chain didn't have enough time to uh, to loosen off enough but you get the idea so when you do pull off your C-ring water pump or your timing chain you'll be able to see right away if it's uh, you know been long enough that this part will be all all scraped up and you can see that it's pretty hollow inside so it can it can leak pretty quick and also you might notice these plastic fins you know that was kind of a stupid idea because those can break off and then lead to overheating now I did find out that this water pump was replaced at a hundred thousand kilometers and back when this car did have the water pump replaced for the first time they didn't have the new uh, the new uh, the new design water pump out on the market that has the new upgraded shaft and seal and also the um, metal fins instead of the uh, plastic fins as well as the sprocket is actually um, pushed out a little bit farther so the timing chain doesn't rub up against this part and also the new uh, crankshaft sprockets and the camshaft sprockets are a little bit pushed out as well just to accommodate that so we don't have any more scraping now if I go down to this is the timing chain cover as well as on your Sebrings when you do this water pump you have to actually support the motor because the timing chain cover is also part of the uh, motor mount assembly so now here's where two of the bolts go on for the motor mount through the timing chain housing and you're gonna see that there's minor scraping there from the timing chain as well as on this side you can see there so that's really you know that's that's not very good and if you look at the beginning of this video or depending if this is part one and part two um, at the beginning of this segment of this video you will see that when I was first disassembling this motor that I was wiggling the timing chain and you know that's that's because the primary timing chain tensioner wasn't tight enough because of the lower oil pressure and that gives you a really 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 you know that's that's when it gets really risky when you can jump your engine time and bend all your valves and that's why some some cars I mean some of you guys that are watching this might have a, a dead 2.7 you're driving along and all of a sudden the engine died because the thing jumped time and the timing chain tensioner went bad so you always 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 want to replace those never never ever just like even if it's in good shape I would always replace it and make sure when you do buy the new one and you do install it make sure that it's working properly and it re and it's reset properly otherwise the minute you start that motor you're gonna bend your valves so if you have any questions just let me know I uh, you know I'm not really an expert on on these cars but I mean I've done lots of research and I want to make sure I get this done right and as well as I want to learn so I mean I'd be glad to share my knowledge with you and if you have any anything you would like to tell me because I'm still tackling this project and learning myself so if you have anything that uh, you think I should know please let me know and uh, that'd be greatly appreciated thank you